Good afternoon, Pastor. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. And some of you might have just watched our previous one, and you may notice that we're in the same setting, same location. Uh, it's because Pastor is leaving out of town tomorrow, which is Wednesday, and we're recording both his recordings. And I'm wearing the same shirt for both. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, to, uh, this episode, and, and we'll, I know we can be brief on this, uh, regarding cancel culture. And uh, how has cancel culture affected pastors in teaching the truth in churches today? Cancel culture, yeah, I think that's in, that is a mentality that has infected a good number of people. I don't know that all people have been infected. I think that there are, there are news agencies that are broadcasting that it's affected everybody. And I think to some degree, uh, cancel culture has affected um, a percentage of people and they're very vocal about it and they use social media once again and a variety of other means to to um, to condemn people that don't agree with what they have to say and unfortunately there there seems to be a, a number of uh, uh, businesses that actually think these people what they have to say matters and that to me is is ridiculous so when it comes into the church there are pastors who are very timid they're, they, for some reason, are afraid to offend sensitive hearers. And when they say something that may be cutting, or at least seems to be cutting to somebody with hypersensitivities, um, they get the letters and they get the negative comments after church. And in some denominations, they may even be warned by their board that they're going to be fired for uh, speaking in an unloving or an ungracious way. And sometimes, Sometimes the boards are made up of, of carnal men who aren't even saved, you know, and the church did them as a business. So it does affect, it does affect a lot of people, John. Um, maybe, maybe more than even I at this moment think. So with the pastors, I'll be honest with you, pastors for the longest time seem to have, not all, but some have given, given in to just the fear of the world anyway. That's not a new thing. Um, you know, we're told by by Paul in, in 1 Timothy and throughout his writings to, to Timothy that he needs to remember uh, to stir up the gift of God, which was which he received through the laying on of the hands of the elders and all. And then he needs to remember that God hasn't given to him a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. It would appear that Timothy perhaps had a bit of a timidity and he lived and he ministered in a very uh, hostile environment. He was pastor of Ephesus. And the church in Ephesus was filled with hostility. I mean, you know, that uh, was a center of pagan worship and all. And so, you know, he, he lived in the midst of a lot of pressure and a lot of quote unquote cancel culture that existed there. And so what do you do? Well, you have to have fear. So you fear God. If you're gonna fear someone, fear the one um, who has the power to not only uh, judge, but to cast you into hell. If you're gonna fear anybody, uh, God can take your life, Jesus said, and also cast you into hell. That's the one to fear. And so every pastor is called to have uh, a fear of the Lord, but we're not to be afraid of telling the truth and afraid of the people and the reaction. Uh, for the longest time, I've been in, in pastoral ministry for a long time, and. On many occasions, uh, on Sundays, people will cancel me. And how do I know that? They just get up and walk out. Mm. They just walk out. You know, they're rude and they're um, kind of people that don't listen. They're going to argue in their heart, so they walk out. And I had to get used to the reality of that. So I could, I could easily give in to the temptation to try and tickle ears and make friends and be popular. Um, but I don't because... I have to answer to God. He called the pastor to speak the truth in love. And like Paul asked the Galatians, have I therefore become your enemy because they tell you the truth? I believe that, that the truth should be spoken, but in a loving fashion. Unfortunately, for some, speaking truth isn't loving. And so as a result of that, they, they try to cancel you. So what is the past, pastor to do? Fear the Lord and be trustworthy to handle his word and to present his word as, as clearly as possible. 
And, and Paul made that clear when he was speaking to the Ephesian elders there in the city of Miletus. He said that I haven't hesitated to, to give to you the entire counsel of God. And therefore, he said, I am no longer in any way responsible for you. You've received it. Now you're responsible mm. for what you've heard. And so I think that's what God has called the pastor to do, is to teach the truth, to love the people, but don't avoid the hard subjects and present them as biblically as you can. And let the let the Lord sort out the sheep from the goats. And then on that day, you'll we will hear, "Well done." Well, you want to hear that? You want to you want to be His faithful messenger. You want to love the sheep. You're not a hireling. You're not there for the paycheck. You're there for the eternal reward. Mm -hmm. And so, if your heart is there, if you fear Him and love the people, I, I think you could have an effect. Well, thank you, Pastor. Uh, thank you so much for your time in addressing this and. And again, want to uh, have you join us by the time you get this message for our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45 a.m. We have children's ministry. Invite your friends and family. We look forward to seeing you. And come with us to Israel. Oh, and come with us to Israel. It's going to be an exciting time. <laughs> yep. God bless you guys. Thank you, Pastor David. All right.